Kwiatkowski. Um, he, he has a really in interesting um, uh, life path that, he, that he's taken. Uh, he started off in Poland and came to the United States uh, where he got his uh, PhD in physics, where he did um, uh, fusion, um, physics rela relating to fusion, and then uh, didn't feel that um, that was solving enough problems with the world. And so he started uh, a, a, uh, a system called open source ecology, and they're living, uh, and they're, they're living and working and developing uh, open source technology in Kansas on the Factor E farm. Okay, thanks. Hey. I'd like to continue. On. Yep. Okay, we're going to continue the theme of, of post scarcity, well, escape velocity. Okay. Um, what I'd like to talk about to you is, the, is building the world's first replicable post scarcity resilient community. So let's take what all of us are talking about here and apply it to working a, a real community, and that's on land. So. <laughs> Well, what if we took everything that we have learned to date and applied it to making a better world? Okay, I think the answer that we come up with is post-scarcity resilient communities. So let's consider this. Let's take the um, concept of miniaturization of civilization. Okay, if we could use all that we know today and we uh, start a feasible experiment of, of addressing, well, what's the minimum size we can build a settlement, a human settlement, that will still provide you the absolute comfort, prosperity, autonomy that we have today in, um, in the mainstream world? Well, by, by miniaturizing civilization, as we can do today, um, we can do a viable experiment. And it should be trivial to do so, in fact, is our claim. So we claim stuff like a 1,000 people can get you up to a community of a thousand skilled people can get you up to clean room technology. How about that? Let's think about that for a sec. Okay, um, we have nature and energy and the sun providing all our needs that we need. Uh, the point about this slide here is that right now, using existing solar concentrator electric technology, it would take you 0.3 percent of the U.S. area to provide all the electricity needs. Okay, uh, think about it. M many of you might have. But energy is not an issue, so let's move on. Move on to the next problem here. Okay, so I'd like to talk about the the material resource. If you have energy, then you can have all the materials that you need from ubiquitous resources. So take ubiquitous clay, and you can smelt aluminum. That's also known as advanced civilization. Take ubiquitous sand, you can refine silicon. That's called the digital age. These are not scarce resources. And as far as technology, the age of the Star Trek replicator is here. And once again, a favorite example of RepRap. Download a design from across the globe, print it on your desktop. And there you have Mini China right on your desktop. So back to our work. We're selecting a small subset of technology known as the Global Village Construction Set, or what we call Resilient Community Construction Set. Uh, just 40 tools, covers cars, tractors, machinery, power generation, renewable energy, adaptable digital fabrication. It's actually self-replicating by virtue of the, the self-replicating fab lab and nature, the ecology, the agroecology, that's self-replicating in itself. Uh, so we're not talking about it. We've built some things. This is our high-performance open source tractor, live track with lifetime design in its essence. Uh, we can cut these things out from steel using our CNC torch table, open source. And we've already created a real product. This is our high-performance compressed earth brick press, which you can use to make building materials out of the earth under your building site. And what we've seen with the open hardware is taking the bottom out of economics. The economic models work. And RepRap has demonstrated a factor of 30 cost, cost decrease over the commercial 3D printers from before. And we're demonstrating similar for the CEB press. It's costing us 10 to 20 times less to produce a machine on a market uh, for, say, five or $6,000, because the parts are only like 2,500 bucks. And we can capture the value of the information and labor of the actual production. So the economics can work. Can we use this to actually make strides in the post-scarcity lifestyle? Well, if you can, you can build advanced structures from the soil right be below your site, well, that's, that's one step to getting there. 
What we're really interested is in, in resilient communities, uh, settlements that by nature of their open source design are highly replicable, the technology set is replicable, and we like to call it viral village, if you can spread this across the globe. And um, what we talk about is a resource-based economy. That means you're using your, your local materials and advanced tech and information to process all that into the life stuff of, of sustenance. And you're making an economy of products, not funny money, which can vaporize at any time, like the Federal Reserve notes. So other things like wars become obsolete if you don't have to kill the next guy to get your, get your means of survival. Population explosion, just kind of going by the wayside. If you, if you have immediate resource flows, resource feedback to, to inform the way you're living. So can this in any way be, be competitive with the mainstream economy? Well, the basic design is that you have to be able to produce just as well as the mainstream economy. And that's, that's built in. Here you see some examples. Can we compete with that field of combines using open source equipment? Well, the combine is one of the tools in the global village construction set. We're not talking about going to the stone age either here. We're talking about unleashed information and technology, providing a novel option of lifestyle, which we call neo-subsistence. That means now you have a choice. You can either uh, provide your needs with, with the skills and tools that you have, or you can trade in outside markets. That becomes an option. It sounds crazy, but that's just the default of where we're going to with technology and information. You do need some skills, you, you do need lifetime design equipment to make this feasible. These don't come off the shelf in your mainstream industrial pre-scarcity, your scarcity system. But um, add Industry 2.0, like we mentioned with the, the, the design that's global and local production, and then you have autonomy for you and me. So actually we believe this is a good competitor to see st studying political experimentation. Because once you actually create a full economy, an economy is political power. And if you can replicate that, then you can possibly have a, have a recreate the world. The open source fab lab is one of the, the items. It's a universal constructor, your small scale fabrication facility, which, which does the work of what big factories used to do yesterday. That's one of our initiatives. And what we, I mean, the, this quest here kind of gets personal because you really have to ask yourself what kind of lifestyle do you want to lead? I mean, can we really become integrated humans who are much more powerful and capable than yesterday? I mean, that's, that's the real question for us. Um, I mean, right now, most of us probably don't think about this kind of option because all of us are talking a lot about big mainstream systems. But I think the, the new patterns are just making this natural option. So we can talk about reconnecting to ourselves, to, to nature, to others in a deeper way. And actually the fact is about production. I mean, production is the conver conversion of your natural resources of nature into the things that you use. And that's a pretty deep way to reconnect. I mean, I, I've seen that in my own life quite a bit. Well, so... This is just a brief overview presentation. Uh, we are three-year-old babies on our land-based facility, and um, we're in the Kansas City area. Uh, but we're looking for people to dive into this thing and, and help us build this. This is in no way built, but we've, we've got some initial results. Uh, we are making progress on a tool set. We're seeing that the economic models work, and we're looking for developers. So once so this is our support blip here, um, jump into the deep end and help us on site. Uh, I mean, this is some serious skills and integrated skill base that's needed, and that's the hard part to find. Uh, or if you can't do that, become a true fan. We've got about 60 true fans, people who are donating like 10 bucks a month, and they subscribe for two years. That's been a, an essential part of our support. Because the bottom line is freedom, it's autonomy. There need be no compromises um, that we cause on a on global geopolitics. I mean, we can lead a clean lifestyle with good technology, no, no compromise. So the point is, let's just start a new system and evolve to freedom. So thanks a lot for giving me a chance to speak.